Well, welcome back to our show, See, Here Love, and we hope you had a great weekend. And I just want to say this. Thank you to so many of you who have responded through our Say Hello button on our website and have made comments on our blog, uh, given us feedback on our YouTube channel, written us on Facebook, commented on our Instagram. Wow. We have been overwhelmed by your response in the past few weeks that we just launched on March 8th. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But we also want more people to hear about See Her Love. So continue to share our blog posts and our show to your friends, family, all around the world. And I've got to say, from all around the world, we're getting responses from Spain, France, Bahamas, South Korea, Guam, the Philippines, everywhere around the world. There are people accessing and watching our show. And it's, a, it's because of you. So thank you so much. And I need to thank my lovely co-host for making that happen Aww. on social media and for bringing such great content and thoughts to the show. Hi, Hello. Cheryl hey. Joanna. Good to have you here. And excuse me, <laughs> what is this? Hello, Cheryl's jacket. Yeah, what is this? Explain. <laughs> this is uh, it's an original creation uh, by a wonderful African designer in Toronto called Benny Boo. And uh, nice. she's just brilliant. I thought I'd bring a little bit of, of my homeland today. Oh, I love that. Cool. And wh what are you wearing, Joanna? A lovely black <laughs> I love it. shirt with a beautiful necklace. I shop at Target. <laughs> and that's why I love, I love you. it. I know. And that is why we love this show because there's so much diversity, diversity as you can see. And we love that our special guest is here with us. This is Kelly Cameron from mm -hmm. International Justice Mission Canada. Kelly, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about you right here on Motivational Monday because I think it's perfect that you're here for this day. But yeah, yeah tell us about you. Sure. So as you said, I work with International Justice Mission mm -hmm. and I am the manager of strategic engagement. And so okay. people usually ask me, what exactly does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I think I have one of the greatest jobs in IJM Canada in that I get to work with women and women's groups, young adults and young professionals. Um, and I also get to work with our returning interns and fellows and really help people and support them in their justice journey. So oh. talking about, you know, what is justice? How do I go about doing it? And taking those steps to hmm. um, actually do justice. Wow. Wow. And you've got a social worker background as well. I do. I have my master's in social work. Mm -hmm. So I have had opportunity to walk alongside um, people in their justice journeys as well. I like that, wow. justice journey. I love that. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of neat. I haven't really heard that, but I think, does everybody have a justice journey or is there one, or do we all need to have you, someone like you bring that out in us? I think everyone has a justice journey. I really do. I think there are different points of kind of impact in our lives where we are faced with an injustice mm -hmm. and then it's what do we actually do about that injustice. Hmm. Right. And so I think that's usually the catalyst for your justice journey. Wow, I've never heard it said that way. I love way. that. So you're saying that most people have an injustice done to them, and then we have a choice of what, how to respond. It could be something that's done to you or something that you hear about and it really resonates with yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So my justice journey started as out of a high school project and learning about the oh, realities wow. of sex trafficking, and that launched my justice journey. Wow. So you've had interest in the sex trafficking since high school? Yes. Wow. We're going to get to that, I know, because we're going to get to know a little bit more about you. But I think you are the perfect person as our guest host because for Motivational Monday, we're focusing on the scripture from Isaiah this week. And I didn't know that this was actually the verse for International Justice Mission Canada when I chose it. It was kind of like, what's a good justice verse for us to discuss on this Monday? So I'm, you know, looking, reading, a few prayers. <laughs> Which one, God? Mm -hmm. And this one came up. And so um, we read from our New Life Bible app. So I want to read because there's so much content. And I know yeah. you, Cheryl, Joanna, you have a lot to say about it. So yeah. let's pull it up. And it's Isaiah 1, 17. And it says this. It says, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, and plead the case of the widow. Now, I think that's a little heavy for Monday. <laughs> for some people, mm. but I think it's important that we don't lose sight of these verses that call us toward action, a, a justice journey, essentially, and a lifestyle change. Would mm. you agree? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's, Joanna, 
because I, I wanted to hear some of your thoughts and impressions. Yeah. What, what immediately jumps out at you with that verse? Yeah, well, the verse itself is full of action, right? Learn, seek, defend, take up, mm. plead. So it's very like do, do, do. And mm. if you read the verses right before it, God is basically saying to the people, talk is cheap. I'm so sick of all your like noisy worship songs and all this stuff. Like <laughs> do something. Mm -hmm. Don't just like say all these words to me. I don't want to hear it. And so, uh, yeah, so it's this call to the people of God to move to action, to be moved with compassion mm. for justice. Mm. And I mean, I don't want to go too far into it without giving other people a chance mm -hmm. to dive in, but it's a, it's a huge challenge because it's so easy to sit here and talk about justice and what does that mean and we can theorize about it and mm -hmm. feel sort of emotionally moved by it. Mm. And God is so clearly saying like, I'm so tired of you just talking about it mm -hmm. and talking about all your religiousness, but like, what are you actually doing uh, to make a change? It's good. Cheryl, what about your first impression as, as you hear that and read that? Uh, I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's like practical Christianity 101. I feel like um, it's a good map for us um, to get out of, I love what Joanna said, but really to step away from the theory and the ideology of Christianity, but what it, the outworking of it and what it looks like day to day and, and what God is uh, expecting of us mm -hmm. as his children to defend those that are broken and to stand up and to um, reach out and to you know, um, lift up. And I think, I think it's so important that we not have a myopic view of Christianity, that we realize that we are not here on our own, here by ourselves, mm -hmm. here for ourselves, but we are here to really help and to lift up and to heal. Yeah. Uh, it's so important that our Christianity um, look like something, yeah. Yeah. not sound like something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. love that. That's good. Kelly, what about for you? I mean, I know this is one that you're steeped in because of work, but yes. from a work and personal perspective, what jumps out at you? Yeah. The thing that always jumps out about to me around this verse is Joanna mentioned the, the context that it's in. And to me, it's it's the weight that God puts on justice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He yeah. talks about, you know, stop your sacrifices. I'm not listening to your prayer yeah. because of the injustice that's yeah. there. And so just the weightiness mm -hmm. that God puts mm -hmm. on justice mm -hmm. and do we as his followers have that same perspective of mm -hmm. the importance of justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. I think that's why I chose it for this Monday because you know we're setting up the week, yeah. and it's a reminder. Like you're saying, it's an action. It's it not is. passive. There's a doing and a choice. And I think that's the thing that was my impression. Like what you know, Joanna was saying. It's like, oh, like I can't just be like, yeah, we should do that. That's great. That's yeah. bad. Oh, like which. I'll be honest, I tend to do a lot of, like I look at things in life and it can be overwhelming. And so then I'm just like, well, I'll just let other people do it. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very active role and participation on my part yeah. to be involved. Yeah. And, and we're seeing that like, it's always in the context of God is reminding people who were once slaves. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. remember what you were. Mm -hmm. Don't get so lazy about who I have gifted, like the life I have gifted you. Mm -hmm. That like, you were once oppressed. You were once fatherless. You were once, you know, the widow. Or the, the, as he uses the metaphor of like God as husband to Israel wife. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like you were once this thing, mm -hmm. and so like how dare you forget what I have rescued you out of? And you are not going and rescuing others. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what else too? I love is that it, it speaks. This verse to me speaks to relationship. As Christians, we have such expectations for God. We have such expectations that we want from him and we need yeah. him to do. And, and, and here he's laying out his expectation for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if it's a relationship, it's a two-way mm -hmm. relationship. So what would you have me to do? Because I want so much from you. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, here, the fatherless, the widow, the broken, this is what mm -hmm. I expect from you. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. So it, the first line is learn to do right. Yeah. What does that mean? Like how, if somebody's like, okay, well, okay, I, I'm hearing you girls. But how do I, what's my first step on how to, how do I learn to do right? What would be your thoughts, Kelly? What do you think? I mean, because that's a, I think that's a very practical yeah. question. Yeah. I think for me, um, especially when looking in the area of justice and learning like what's right and what's wrong, for me, it's always the plumb line of Jesus, mm -hmm. right? So it's like if we are going to actually learn to do right and walk out our faith, it's what did Jesus do? How did Jesus interact with the poor, for example? How did he interact with those who are marginalized? And so living out the example that he's given us. Hmm. That's good. So looking at Jesus, the person, 
and saying how did he interact. And, and we've talked about this on other shows mm -hmm. about how he was with women and yeah. marginalized the broken, right? Mm -hmm. uh, next line, I think, is, you know, seek justice. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a big one. Like, when you mm -hmm. seek justice, you know, what are your thoughts? It's like, so we learned it is right. You're saying, look to Jesus. And then we're saying, seek justice. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What would you say? Well, I, I think of uh, a guy that I was just hearing on the radio the other day who's a, a lawyer who works for guys who are on death row in the U.S. and how he is seeking justice on their behalf. And many times, actually, he's not successful. Mm -hmm. um, but there's this, like, he was speaking on a, just a normal radio station here in Canada, but, but he was clearly a Christian by the way he was mm -hmm. using language. Mm -hmm. And he was acknowledging that there is a, a justice that we seek after here, but also, like, a hope of justice that will come later mm -hmm. when we don't ultimately. Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean we give up and say, like, oh, well, like, God will judge us all in the end or God mm -hmm. will take care of it. We have to mm -hmm. actively seek it. And that's where we become like him on earth. Mm -hmm. But there's also an acknowledgement that, like, there is this high higher justice mm -hmm. that we um, have a hope in even when things seem so hopeless. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, uh, seek justice for me means to give voice to the voiceless, mm -hmm. um, to, to really um, see through his eyes. And uh, God is a just God and he's a loving God. And so many times um, there are things that are not not right in this world. Let's you know. Let's speak very honestly, and and it's. I think it's incumbent on us to uh, do our very best to hear those. You know, the see, hear, love, mm -hmm. to see those that are broken and hear their hearts, and and give voice to the voiceless and love them through that and help them. And and I think that that's what seek justice means for me is yeah. is giving voice to the voiceless. You know, whether I do it through film or theater or we feed them or sandwiches or fight on their behalf legally, um, that's giving voice to. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Kelly, for you, I know that you're, you know, again, this is the work you do, but mm -hmm. talk to us in a practical way. You know, what does that, that look like? And as we go further in the verse, it's like, you know, defend uh, those that are fatherless mm -hmm. and, and give voice and defend the widows and care for the widows. Uh, it seems overwhelming, because mm -hmm. that's a lot of stuff. Like, first of all, we're learning, and then we're seeking, and then we're defending, yeah. and then we're like, like what Joanna said, I mean, there's a lot of action points, and yeah. we can get overwhelmed. Uh, talk to us about practically how you, you know, live that out in a way that is, is possible, and, and you can do it versus being overwhelmed and not doing anything. Right, that's a great question, and it's one that I get asked all the time, right? So people hear about the work of International Justice Mission and they say, this is all great, but you know, I'm just a, and then kind of insert mm. limiting um, <laughs> ability there. So right. I hear things yeah. like, I'm just a mom, or I'm just a teacher, or I'm just a student, and what can I do? Yeah. And um, the question that God gave me to ask back to people is, what's in your hand and who's in your circle? Mm. And okay. where is it that mm. you have an ability to make a difference. The thing yeah. with justice is, um, in justice there is always an oppressor and the oppressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing about seeking justice is you're essentially putting yourself in between the oppressor and the oppressed. Mm -hmm. And that may look like front lines work, which not everybody can mm -hmm. do, mm -hmm. but it also looks like, okay, so how am I gonna make people more aware of this injustice that's happening? How mm -hmm. am I going to, for example, you know, raise funds so that others can stand in that place between the oppressed and the oppressor. And it's mm -hmm. amazing to see what people start doing with just the little bit that's in their hands and then gathering their circle to do something about it. That's I really, love that. Yeah, you too. It's a great yeah. visual. It's yeah. in your hands I mean, yeah. and who's in your circle. Yeah. And I love that because mm -hmm. the, isn't that what Jesus did? Mm -hmm. He stood between the oppressor and us the oppressed. And, and so we're just following that pattern mm -hmm. of mediating and interceding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. You know, as we, it's a it's a, a big verse, and I know that we're going to continue in our blog posts to talk about. It. I know that you'll be writing um, further on that, which I think will be oh, great. great. Yeah, uh, we'll be writing on it. But when, as our viewers are watching, you know, there's going to be a lot of questions for them. And so I think for all of us, what are some of the takeaways you think that for ourselves personally, or even for our viewers, that they can take away from? this verse from Isaiah 1, 17? Because I think we can't just sit on it and go, okay, great verse, and, and out we go, but what are we going to do? Yeah, well, I love that, like, right off the top of that, you 
you pointed this out that the first word is learn. Mm. So it can be learned. Mm -hmm. So most of us are sitting here rem thinking about all the things we haven't done, but mm -hmm. like it's a pr it's not from zero to a hundred right away. It's like let's learn about it. So we're not going to go mm -hmm. from sitting watching this on our phones to I don't know being on the front lines in uh, Cambodia you know fighting for justice like okay like what's the first step of a hundred steps yeah. towards that direction and obviously through IJM and things like that there's all kinds of resources where you can begin to learn yeah. that will begin to engage you with this kind of work mm -hmm. and I you know for young people who are considering what kind of careers that they want to have mm -hmm. there's all kinds of career opportunities no matter what kind of brain type you have yeah. whether you're more science or more arts yeah. or whatever that that's allowing people through law and through science and through politics and through you know, arts and humanities like what yeah. you do Cheryl uh, to engage with this stuff no matter what type of person you are so what's what's in your hand um, mm -hmm. we can all learn step by step to do better at it so don't be discouraged yeah, like yeah. if you're not yeah. if you're feeling yeah. like you're at zero yeah. or yeah. you're at one out of a hundred it takes steps yeah good I, I'm gonna I you just you really hit my heart with um, the what's in your hand and who's in your circle mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna blog about that later that really mm -hmm. resonated with me um, and I want to just encourage someone on the what's in your hand and part of it. Um, there is nothing too small, there is nothing mm -hmm. too unique, nothing too abstract. I do art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a theater company and I do film. Mm -hmm. But um, I answered that call when God said, you know, this is what I expect of you mm -hmm. and this is what's happening around you. Will you take the blinders off of your myopic life and look around? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, God, what's in my hand? And so it was art. And you know, you wouldn't believe it, but you know, since 2009, I've I've lived social advocacy all my life now, mm -hmm. and I've used that. That's what that's what my tool was. Mm -hmm. So we can use anything, yeah. and and make a really big impact. And that just art and fine arts and drama has led me into prisons and you know Uganda and deserts and England and brothels. So we all have something. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage someone, you have something, no matter how big or small, uh, and use it to really make a difference in someone's life. Yeah. Thank you for that. That was awesome. So Kelly, I know you already gave away sort of the takeaway with the, you know, in your hand and, and who's in your circle, but Love what would that. you say? Because you were a high school student when you started this. Mm -hmm. So age obviously is not an issue and because you, you've lived that out, but what would you say to somebody who's watching going, something's connecting, I've been struggling with this, what would be your sort of takeaway as we move into the week? Mm -hmm. I think one of the big things around seeking justice and kind of starting that journey as a person of faith is prayer. And people That's ask good. me all the time, yeah. kind of, you know, <laughs> what can I do or I feel like I'm just praying. Prayer yeah. is huge. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely huge in seeking justice and whether that is praying and asking God, okay, Father, you have shown me this thing that is stirring my heart. Right. So yeah. what are my next steps? As well as praying for the issues of injustice that you are seeing um, and watching God's hands move, which we have amazing stories of how mm. that happens in mm. prayer is so key to that. Wow. Mm. I am so glad you're with us on Wednesday too. You're here with us like for most of the week and I, you've already just sort of like blown us away yeah. with some of these thoughts. Yeah. I think it's, a, it's important and you've got to have an important voice to bring in with these kinds of visuals of I love that, you know, what's in your hand and who's in your circle. So thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, to the viewers, um, I know that there are questions and I know some of you are like, mm, I got to pray and I have to stop the excuses, yeah. but I'm encouraged by the, it's a learning step. And yet, you know, just like us, you know, we, we go to the scriptures to, to get that sense of what's the plumb line, like Kelly had mentioned, of Jesus mm -hmm. and who is Jesus. And so I'd encourage you that if you don't have it, the New Life Bible app, download it. Yeah. Uh, it's what we've said before, hashtag hope in your pocket. Yes. And it's with you always. So when you get discouraged and you're like, okay, I'm going to pray, you know, you go to the scriptures and say, okay, what is Jesus saying? Who is Jesus? How is he living? Mm -hmm. And that should be an encouragement uh, for you, an inspiration. Yeah. He is so inspirational, Jesus. Wow, when I look at him in that light, I'm like, ah, what a man. <laughs> so we just want to encourage what you. What a God. That. What a God, yeah. yeah. And so, again, I want to say this. Um, Motivational Monday is to get you ready for the week. It's to get you thinking. And, and as we progress, some of the verses are going to be ones like, yeah, that's a great one. Makes me feel great. Yeah. And other verses are going to be ones that are going to be like poking at you and saying, uh, we want to just like 
that to you, a little conviction, just as it is for us, on how to live this life with Jesus in relationship yeah. as the church, building his kingdom and, and making a difference uh, in the world. So mm -hmm. thank you. Again, go today onto our blog post, read about our thoughts about the show. And we thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you on Wednesday.